Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. About a year ago, I made a video predicting the coming of what can only be described as a Pacamama rite of mass. In the aftermath of the Amazon Synod and the enthronement of the Paca demon at that synod in 2019, various groups in various places around the world wanted their own enculturated version of the Novus Ordo Mass, crafted for them that includes ancient pre-Christian rituals inserted into the Mass. The first formal request by the Church authorities for such a Mass has been made, and it was made by bishops in Mexico. Now, the story is so unbelievable that if it wasn't getting reported by reputable Catholic outlets, I wouldn't believe it. The key error to understand in this is syncretism, which I'll go over in a moment. The story is actually almost funny in terms of context, given that Francis is called the Novus Ordo, the unique and sole expression of the Roman rite. And yet he is very likely to approve of the monstrosity you're about to encounter here. Let's dive into the story. So headline from Info Bay, a Spanish language news site. Bishops of Mexico will ask the Pope to include Mayan rites in Catholic masses. Mayan, as in pre-Columbian pagan rituals. Now how did we get here? We'll get to that. Bishops of Mexico were asking for this, reminding us once again that numerous prelates warned that the real third secret of Fatima warned of an apostasy in the church coming from the very top of the hierarchy. Keep that in mind. From the article, quote, The Diocese of San Cristobal in southern Mexico will send Pope Francis a proposal to include indigenous Mayan rites such as dance, music, and the particip participation of women in Catholic masses. This is the second proposal of these characteristics that arises from the Catholic ecclesial community. The first on native peoples came from the Republic of Zaire in Africa. Cardinal Philippe Edismendi Esquival, who is coordinating the work, explained to EFE this Wednesday that the proposal will be presented in April to the Assembly of the Mexican Episcopal Conference, CEM, who were one of the organizers of the Amazon Synod. And in May, it will be delivered in Rome by the Archbishop of Puebla, Victor Sanchez, President of the Commission of Pastoral Liturgy. These liturgical adaptations are aimed at uniting the communities, quote, respecting their value, taking into account the culture of the native peoples, said the Bishop of San Cristobal, Rodrigo Aguilar Martinez. The religious leaders concluded a meeting in Chiapas this week, which was also attended by Monsignor Aurelio Garcia Macias, Undersecretary of the Vatican's Department of, for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, as well as indigenous priests and catechists. We are working on a meeting that is important for the diocese, the country, the Church of Mexico, and the universal church in terms of liturgical adaptations. Now, there's a phrase that you should remember. End quote. Now, this isn't just offering the new Mass in indigenous languages. That would be fine. The Novus Ordo Mass is written to be said in the vernacular, and whatever vernacular everyone translates to is fine. It's nothing new to translate it into these kind of things. What we have here is something else entirely. It's the inclusion of ancient practices for the worship of what St. Paul in his letters reminds us as being demons. We want to include those practices in the Mass. It's an example of syncretism. Now, you might not know what that is. It's a fancy-sounding word. Now, according to Father John Harden, whose lectures I have on this channel for your interest, Syncretism is defined as follows, quote, The effort to unite different doctrines and practices, especially in religion. Such unions or amalgams are part of cultural history and are typical of what has occurred in every segment of the non-Christian world. Syncretism is also applied to the ecumenical efforts among separated Christian churches and within Catholicism to the attempts made of combining the best elements of different theological schools. But in recent years, the term mainly refers to misguided claims that religious unity can be achieved by ignoring the differences between faiths on the assumption that all creeds are essentially one and the same, end quote. This also includes, you know, infusing into one religion's rituals and forms of worship the rituals and forms of worship of another. This is the fusing of two different religions together. You see the problem. This is a corruption of the Catholic faith, pure and simple. But others see it as progress. Now, this request by the bishops of Mexico just might be an example of what Francis means by the church moving forward, always moving forward. Headline from cath.net. Hope, the church is always moving forward. 
Francis gave an interview where he felt the need to defend Vatican II again, saying the church is actually mature now and moving with the signs of the times, whatever that means. But it does this through embracing change and progress. That's ideological language employed by the same man who recently chastised us all for using ideological language and being partisan. Hot meat kettle. From the article, quote, Pope Francis sees the Second Vatican Council and its upheavals as a common thread for understanding his pontificate. The council was one of those things that God accomplished in history through holy people, said the Pope in an interview for their Belgian Christian weekly newspaper, Tertio and Dimanche. The church is always moving forward. The council has opened the door to a greater maturity that is more in line with the signs of the times, the Pope said in an interview, according to the Vatican News Agency. The interview was therefore already conducted in mid-December and published shortly before the 10th anniversary of the elevation of Francis to the papacy on March 13th. In the conversation, the Pope also traced back the topic of synodality, which he had promoted to the time of the Council. So the conciliar Pope, Paul VI, had been impressed that the Eastern Catholic Churches had retained their synodal dimension. He therefore announced the establishment of the Secretariat of the Synod of Bishops, to promote synodality again in the church, Francis explained. At the Amazon Synod in October 2019, there was a quote-unquote maturation in this sense. The Pope continued, And now we are here, and we have to move forward. This is happening through the current worldwide synodal process. The two synods on synodality will help us to clarify the meaning and method of decision-making in the church, said Francis, with a view to the Synod meetings in Rome scheduled for autumn of 2023 and 2024, end quote. This request for a rite of mass that includes pre-Christian Mayan rituals is a direct consequence of the Amazon Synod, which ran in 2019 and was made famous by the inclusion of the enthronement of the Pachademon at the start of the Synod. This was apparently part of the quote-unquote maturation process of the Church, if you can take what Francis is saying here at all seriously. Now, the question that many have is, will he approve the rite of mass? He almost certainly will. Now, why would he do that? Because he approved something similar for the Congo already, and he did that a few years ago. And he is the man who presided over the pack of demon enthronement for the whole world to witness. He was standing there when it happened, and he accepted ceremonial gifts from the main celebrant, if you want to call it that, of the event. Francis has spoken at length about needing to include and protect the cultures of the people in question, and his idea of doing that is to change the church to make them more welcome. So instead of being told to put aside their ancient practices that venerate demons, he is instead going to allow them to include such practices in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. This request is being made against the backdrop of the opening of the new Abrahamic House of Worship, where three religions will share the grounds with three temples for worship in the name of peace. In 2019, when this was first announced, Archbishop Vigano published a letter condemning the news. And his words at that time are relevant to us now, three and a half years later. From his letter at that time, he quotes both Dom Prosper Geringer and Pius XI, who both taught against the heresy of syncretism. Quote, The mystical bride of Christ over the centuries has never been contaminated, nor will she ever be contaminated, according to Cyprian's words. The bride of Christ cannot be made false to her spouse. She is incorrupt and modest. She knows but one dwelling. She guards the sanctity of the nuptial chamber chastely and modestly. See Pius XI's Encyclical Mortalium Animos, paragraph 10. Today, more than ever, the Church needs strong and consistent doctrines. In the midst of disillusion, the compromises become more and more sterile, and each of them takes away a piece of the truth. Show yourself, then. Who in the end you are, convinced Catholics, there is a grace linked to the full and complete confession of faith. This confession, the Apostle tells us, is the salvation of those who make it. And experience shows that it is also the salvation of those who understand it. I'm curious what you think about this. Do you see this as more rotten fruits of the pack of demon? Do you think I'm being off base here for objecting to all this nonsense? Do you think this is no big deal? Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.